go woke, go broke. That is what's going on for many of these extremely left-leaning cities here. Now, if you go to places like Las Vegas, go to Texas, go to the state of Florida, you won't really see like tents everywhere, okay? There's not really such a thing as a big open-air drug market in Miami. You're not going to be seeing like a mass row of homeless encampments in Las Vegas. It's just not going to happen. This is why Miami, for example, which used to just be hospitality beaches, is now filled with tech companies and finance companies. Las Vegas, for example, used to just be gambling. Now it's startups and also VCs. It's crazy. The U.S. cities here, it's changing. What used to be this is now this. San Francisco used to be a big tech city. Now it's getting empty and it's just crime filled everywhere. It looks like this on a constant basis. And in my opinion, it's really, really sad, right? It's sad to see people having to sleep on the streets, people just doing drugs everywhere. And the city's laws are so lax. The business owners are happy. The people who are homeless and are addicted to drugs aren't happy. Nobody's happy in this city. And there isn't any sort of massive change happening in San Francisco either. Like it's just straight shoplifting at this point. I mean, you won't actually see scenes like this in like Florida, right? Obviously, every state has shoplifting, but San Francisco takes it to a whole new level. Shoplifting is like, well, you get a slap on the wrist if you get arrested. That's an if. And it's a small place, right? And you're going to be seeing less and less people as time goes on. It is fentanyl fueled, guys. And the San Francisco mayor is warning that a crime ridden city faces a $728 million budget deficit over the next two years because remote work is causing property taxes and public ridership to drop like a rock. And this article was published back in September, I mean, December, 2022. So we already have almost 10 months you know, after this article was written. Now the budget deficit is even higher because apparently San Francisco needs to spend over a billion dollars to combat homelessness. I don't really know why they're spending this much money and how can you even spend that much money? I don't know, like their budget is so weird in San Francisco. You probably have heard of stories about like the one to $2 million toilet, right? It's just like one toilet and it's like one to $2 million. It's absolutely crazy. And San Francisco, when you wanna do anything, you gotta go through several different loopholes. There's laws that state you can't actually do tent sweeps. And like I said before, if they do go to this crazy budget deficit, which some people say it's more than 700 million, it's more like a billion dollars, they're gonna have to borrow money from the federal government. They won't even have any money to do any sort of public services. Even now, San Francisco, for some reason, when they use the dollar, it's like super inflated. Like when they do anything, it's just so much more expensive than other states when the other states are doing the same exact thing San Francisco is doing. So I'm not sure what's going on, but it's like a diesel truck. They use dollars like crazy and they need money quick because now they're going to the negatives for the first time ever. Because in San Francisco's decade long tech history, they've never really went negative because of constant construction, constant tech companies moving in. You got Salesforce moving in, Google moving in, Airbnb, for example. So many of these tech companies before the pandemic, they put up with a crap, okay? They're like, okay, the tenderloin is gonna be an open air drug market. We're just gonna be like, screw this, you know? We're just gonna go along with it. Back in the old days, everyone listened to the city. They didn't wanna leave San Francisco because this is where the tech is. If you leave, well, you're gonna leave. Nobody's gonna follow you. But now it's after the pandemic, everyone is leaving, which is causing San Francisco's housing prices plunging about 30% in 16 months, which puts it into like a crash territory. There's many places in the US where property prices are at an all time high. Many of the smaller suburban cities in the Midwest, even Manhattan and Brooklyn are facing all time high prices. Miami, Tampa, Orlando, they're all rising up like crazy. San Francisco housing prices are dropping and don't even get to the commercial side because it's even worse. Because commercial real estate plays a big part of San Francisco and also foreign investments in its real estate. San Francisco is saying that fewer home and office sales is leading to a 64% drop in transfer taxes. Special cities like San Francisco, Las Vegas, you know, New York City, for example, they always have this like extra tax on top of the real estate because it's such high in demand. I mean, if you go to Manhattan and you wanna buy a home, you're gonna to have to pay extra taxes to the government compared to if you just buy it in like a regular suburban city. 
you don't have to do all these different expenses. And San Francisco is like, yeah, man, we're going broke because they only made $186 million when they used to make half a billion dollars from transfer taxes alone. And Chinese tourists coming to San Francisco, they spent like well over a billion dollars. There's no more Chinese tourists in San Francisco. Even the Chinese tourists know that San Francisco is probably not the city you want to be. If you go to the Chinese blogging sites like Weibo and you translate like the forums and pages, San Francisco is actually on the bottom of their list when it comes to vacation. So the Chinese are like, San Francisco is not it. In fact, there's still a decent amount of tourism in San Diego, Seattle, you know, Los Angeles. You know, a lot of Chinese tourists, they like those cities. But San Francisco, man, it's so bad. Like they don't want to come here at all. And that is hundreds of millions of dollars, even over a billion dollars worth of revenue gone for the city. And of course, it's crime ridden. City like city looks like this half the time. Imagine parking your normal Honda Accord, come back, four of your wheels are gone. That is insane. Okay, San Francisco is insane. I can't imagine living in the city and parking a car. I feel like buying a car in the city will cause me more stress than ever. Like, I live in a pretty small city. It's less than a half a million population here in the US. I park in my car anywhere. I mean, it's fine, right? But San Francisco, you park like a Tesla, for example, or a Porsche or a BMW. Yeah, that thing's gone. You know, wheels or maybe the door. And San Francisco is just getting worse and worse. And real estate prices aren't helping either. If you look at San Francisco's real estate, it is pretty bad, right? I mean, don't even believe the listed price because what everyone is saying is prices are way lower than the listed price. If you look at the actual transaction price, it's super low. Like for example, this unit is pretty good. It's already having its ninth price cut and they're still cutting prices. It's a fantastic unit. You can get a parking spot and great views of the city, but nobody wants it, right? This would have been a unit and it's like a really nice building. It's like high caliber building at a pretty decent area. This would have easily sold for like $1.8 million at the peak. But now it's 1.3 and nobody wants it, even though it's in a pretty good neighborhood. And this is exactly what I'm saying. San Francisco just doesn't have any more money left. With so many of these mom and pop stores and companies moving out, it's crazy. I mean, if you go to like the Mission, for example, this is where all the bars and clubs and cool restaurants are. This is where it wants to be. This is like the hipster paradise. It's empty. So many of these stores are getting empty and emptier by the day. It's not great news for San Francisco, right? The Mission District is supposed to be vibing, but even the Mission District is being plagued by crime, homelessness, and rampant death. And San Francisco is not getting any sort of income investment either, with construction falling to an all-time low, with construction being one-seventh of what it was before. Just imagine construction in a city suddenly dropping 80 to 90 percent in a single year that's san francisco for you this city is amazing guys the location is great you know the weather is great the culture is great i've been here before the pandemic i liked it a lot but there's no way i'm coming back ever unless they change things up i'd much rather go to las vegas or miami you know i've made it on my mind you know i'd much rather move to other cities by san francisco this was actually my number one city before the pandemic but after the pandemic, you know, after listening to some friends that moved here for tech jobs and also just locals and people's stories, it really shows you how deteriorated the city has gotten. In fact, many workers aren't coming back. San Francisco has lost 150,000 office workers who used to live here and commute here are now leaving for other parts of the Bay Area, which are still pretty nice. And some are just leaving California altogether. So... It's a different age, it's a digital age, and I feel like the whole pandemic, the Zoom, the online work, really, really shake things up. 